Good morning, everybody. Uh, looking, we, you know, we are teaching a survey of doctrine. We're getting to the end of the course, and it's, of course, end times is the last part of it. And in it, Jesus says, uh, no man knows the day or hour, but he expects us to know the season. And, you know, there's a season for everything and a time for everything. Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time to born, a time to die, a time to heal, a time to uh, bind up, a time to embrace a time to refrain from embracing a time for everything a season for everything under the sun and you know in the end times jesus saying no man knows that they are our but it will be like the summer when you see the fig tree give its tender leaf you know that summer's near there's you know whatever signs different parts of india or different parts of the world there's different things that indicate that the summer's near in ireland it is kind of the swallows begin to come these birds my great birds start to come back and the certain plants of course and fruits begin to show and people know that summer is near so but this idea of season that uh, you know in the knowing the seasons jesus says in his first coming the people didn't recognize that there was a different time the messiah was among them it was evident by the healings the teaching the expectation among the people many things but they didn't recognize the season and it really affected them you know, they lost out hugely on it. And, you know, life has those many seasons, you know, and what works in one season and very well doesn't work in another season. And, you know, we were saying in class on this, you know, if you are kind of a habitual person and a very consistent person, this is a great characteristic to have and a great trait to have. But sometimes you maintain that rhythm when things have changed and we have to change with it. You know, um, you know, what works in, well, let me just put it in the context first of the end times, is that in the end times, perilous times will come. They will be extremely perilous. And also, deception is very great. As you read the various passages on the end times, Matthew 24 and those areas, Mark 13, it is, he really talks about deception and the need to be exceptionally vigilant exceptionally watchful that there is so much deception and deception means i think i understand but i don't i think I, it's this way but it's not it's another way and we actually uh, were convinced that we are right and are seeing things correctly but we are not so he's saying that extra vigilance is necessary uh, in these in these end times and they're perilous times and he talks about jesus like in in uh, his time when he was being crucified, he says, now is the hour of darkness. And Paul says in Ephesians 6, in the evil day, take on the whole that meaning that some days are more severe, more perilous. They are an hour of darkness. They are an evil day. And the point of it being is sometimes there is a need to be more vigilant, more watchful. If there is a war on the borders of your country and you are living there, uh, you need to be more vigilant than the days before the war, obviously. And, you know, we are, for a Christian, life is a spiritual warfare. It doesn't go away. But there are some times that warfare is more intense. And those times require a discerning of the time and to be more vigilant. And there can be seasons and a more, you know, if you want to use those terms again, an evil day or the hour of darkness on an individual that it's just a more intense time for you individually or for a family or for a church or for a nation or for globally and seasons change and we're living in a remarkable day we've you know seen in these last five ten years the colossal global changes that have affected everybody in the culture change uh, right across the whole way it is remarkable how much uh, these things have changed so recognizing the times and seasons and just likewise to put it in a personal level, you know, what works for you as a teenager may not work in your 20s. What was good in your 20s may not work in your 30s and likewise into your 40s, 50s, 60s. And, you know, there can be a time that what worked for a long time for you isn't going to work anymore. Uh, reading this thing from a, uh, one pastor in a church, he's in from a big church in America, and he says that, uh, you know, the church grew and it changed, and he was saying of one of his men, but he didn't grow and change with it. 
he had done things a certain way for all those years and continued to do them the same way, not realizing the church had changed, the church had grown, but he was not prepared to recognize the change season and recognize he had to, you know, retool re, uh, and, and re-equip himself in those things. So these are, uh, you know, the, the, sometimes there is a need for that retooling, re-equipping, and, uh, you know, people uh, can, can, you know, at whatever stage, you know, there's different stages of life, different seasons, and that we equip ourselves for those accordingly. Well, I was going to say a little bit more on the end times. I don't think we really have time, except maybe I'll just end at this one area. In Matthew 24, Jesus talks all about the end times, and he gives that long instructions on it. And then right after it, he speaks four parables in a row about how we should be prepared. And I'll just say two of them, which one was the 10 virgins and five wise and five foolish. And the five wise, of course, had oil in their lamp they all had, but they had also extra oil in their flask because the darkness was prolonged and they had to tarry much longer. So they ran out of resources, but they had that extra supply to fill them up again and the other ones didn't. And meaning that somewhere we have to like, you know, whatever way you want to apply that, that extra flask of oil, oil they retrained, they re-equipped themselves, they got that extra that was needed for the prolonged darkness. And then the following parable is the five talents, two talents, one talent, and the guy got five, he worked it to 10, the guy got two, he worked it to four, and the guy who got one did nothing. And it seems like he's the boyfriend of one of the five virgins who didn't put the oil in the flask. So he just didn't have any resources left in him to do anything with his one talent. And, um, uh, you know, that idea of getting the inner uh, resources, getting yourself equipped, trained and, and, uh, and ready for the hour of darkness and recognizing that it does come and there should be some margin. There should be some margin in our life some what's the word um extra resources like the five virgins had the extra flask of oil they had some extra resources extra emotional resources extra spiritual resources they they had made room for those days so uh okay praise the lord these are just some thoughts to think about amen amen